Hello everyone. My name is Caitlin Kaiser and I've been a teacher with OutSchool since about July 2019. I've been seeing a lot of questions about behavior management and I kind of wanted to talk about what I do and also the tools that Zoom already has to help you out with behavior management. So managing classroom behavior is so different online than it is um, in a traditional brick and mortar environment. You're kind of dealing with a whole host of new issues. You have students who are home, so that can be pretty distracting for them. They might have brothers or sisters or even sometimes unknowing parents or unknowing uh, family friends who might also be a little bit distracting. Distracting. Sometimes they might even be trying to help, but it can be distracting on our end and it can be a little distracting for your class or for your students as well. So Zoom has a lot of options to help you out with these things. Um, it only just takes a little bit of time to kind of figure out exactly what you have to do. So right now you are seeing my welcome screen. This is the screen that I initially screen share when my students enter my classroom. It is always up at the beginning of class. I found in my experience that sh sharing a screen that explains that class will begin soon helps me avoid all of the students trying to unmute themselves and frantically asking where I am, which is a really valid question. If you enter the classroom and you just see a blank screen, it's really easy to assume that something is happening, that there's some type of IT issue. So this is a little bit helpful for them. It also just makes it a little easier for me. So I wanted to talk about kind of the things that I do before I even open up my classroom to any student. So once I launch my class, these are the things that I do immediately, every single time. So the very first thing that I always do, because I do not have a class where people need to be annotating anything, annotating is when they're able to write on the screen. If students write on the screen, the whole class can see what they've written on the screen. Sometimes students might not realize that. In fact, I think most of my students don't realize it when they annotate something that everyone can see it as well. And I'm someone who doesn't really like to embarrass my students, so I'd much rather just remove the option, not even give them the chance to kind of make that mistake. So the way to do that would be to disable attendee annotation, like I just did. If you need to turn that back on, maybe you have a class where halfway through you need to pull up a whiteboard and have everybody kind of annotate math problems or something, you can always enable that attendee annotation when you're ready to do so, but not before. Otherwise, students might kind of get a little, go a little crazy with that thing. Another thing you can do if you are allowing attendee annotation, if you're allowing your students to write on the screen, is you can tell it that you want to see the names of the annotators right here. Just show names of annotators. That way when somebody types on it, their little name, their Zoom name is gonna pop up next to it. That'll let you know exactly who's doing what. And if somebody might annotate something inappropriate, which does sometimes happen, you'll be able to see immediately which student it is. So those are some options there. Another option that I really, really enjoy using is the chat box. So most of my students, especially, let me move this up out of the way here. Most of my students, especially my teenagers, love using the chat box. I find it to be an incredible tool, especially when I have large classes of older teenagers, 17 or 18 year olds, they might not feel comfortable for whatever reason unmuting themselves and speaking. Now, OutSchool does ask that you verify their age at the beginning of class, so you might have to ask them to flip their camera on for a moment. But after that, if there's no requirement that they stay on the camera or that they stay um, unmuted so you can talk to them, unless that's your personal classroom requirement. But OutSchool does not require that. So because of that, I always tell my students in my kind of introduction at the beginning of class that I encourage them to use that chat box if that is the way they feel comfortable speaking to me. Now, usually I just leave it so it is open, so the participant can chat with everyone publicly. I don't mind if other students can see what people are saying in that chat box. And in fact, a lot of times they might find out they have stuff in common with each other in the chat box. I've had a lot of students who, when we're um, talking about music, for example, they find out that they are learning a new thing about something else, for example. Maybe they're learning about a new artist. Maybe one of the other people in class has some really amazing resources to share for that artist. I like to allow them the place to do that in the Zoom chat there. However, sometimes students might get a little carried away with the Zoom chat. You might have to switch it up. So one option that I like to do if my students start spamming the chat box or if I'm worried that it might become distracting to other students, which definitely happens, especially in that 8 to 12 age range, I like to switch the, it to participant can chat with hosts only. Every so often, I'll actually have a parent who recommend that I switch it to that before I ever teach their child because they know that their student just can't keep themselves out of the chat box, which is really, really fair. I do warn my students generally that I'm doing this, although they can see it. There's a little thing when they type, it'll say like, to hosts only. 
Um, so they're aware that it's happening, but I like to give them a few chances to write their behavior. I'll usually just tell them, I see we've got a great conversation going on here in the chat box, but it's completely unrelated to class. It's really distracting to me because I'm trying to monitor the chat while all of our, while I'm teaching. Um, you know, can we please refrain from doing that? You can always chat in the classroom after class. Uh, that usually fixes the problem, but if it doesn't, I like to switch it over to host only. There's one other option that is available to you on Zoom. I never use this one because I like for my students to be able to contact me in the event of an emergency, a technological error, etc. cetera. Um, but if you don't want anybody to be using the chat box, if you wanna make sure everyone is chatting with you in person, or if you're in a class where you know your students will chat with you in person, you can also flip it to participant can chat with no one. Those are all pretty helpful things. Another kind of important thing to check out here is this participants window. So I always open this one at the very beginning of class. I actually have two monitors and I like to keep my participants window and my chat box on my second monitor over here and keep all of my students' beautiful faces and my materials in front of me so I can feel like I'm interacting with them, but can keep an eye out on the participants window and also that chat box for students who use it. So one cool thing about the participants window when you're in screen share mode is that it shows you the waiting room. Now, unfortunately, if you do not have um, a double monitor, if you're just working on one monitor, your screen can get cluttered really, really quickly once you add in your students' little faces, that chat box if you need to keep it open, the participants window, plus your actual materials, and you can kind of have to juggle and you're like moving everywhere and trying to get everything into the right spot. And it can be really, really challenging to teach that way. So because we have a waiting room function now on Zoom that OutSchool uses, you can sometimes have students pop into the classroom and you might not realize they're there because the waiting room will not show unless you have this participants window open. So what I recommend doing at the beginning of class is making sure you've got it checked to play, enter, slash, exit chime. It'll make a little noise every time somebody pops into or out of the classroom. It'll let you know if there are technical issues going on. Maybe if multiple students are leaving the classroom at once, you might want to check your internet. Um, but it'll also let you know when somebody enters the waiting room. That's a really, really helpful skill. Another thing that you have to kind of consider is what you want your students to be doing when they enter the classroom. I always tell my, uh, my Zoom here, I always set it up to mute participants upon entry. That's not because I don't want my students to talk to me. In fact, I love it when they talk to me or they even talk to each other before class. Sometimes I have students who introduce themselves to each other. I think it's great and I love sitting here and watching all of that happening. The reason that I switch it to mute participants upon entry is because sometimes my students will enter class and not realize that they're unmuted and that we can hear them. And that can just make them feel a little bit uncomfortable. So instead of me sitting here and policing it as they come in, making sure that I mute them if it seems they don't want to be unmuted, I just go ahead and start everybody off as muted. So another thing that you can do, and I like to do, especially with my little my little ones in particular here, is I like to tell it to um, not allow participants to unmute themselves. Let me open this in the correct fashion here. All right, so there's mute participants upon entry. It's not letting me do that. That's very frustrating. Um, all right, sometimes Zoom acts a little bit funny, but. What I'm trying to get at here is allow participants to unmute themselves, this guy right here. So when you have this clicked, your students are able to turn their microphones on and off. They're able to interact with you. Um, they're able to talk to you and you don't have to sit there and police it. It can be a really great tool. I usually allow my students to unmute themselves once they're above about eight years old. So about eight to through 18 or so, I'll let them unmute themselves unless it becomes a problem, unless somebody um, isn't respectful, somebody's yelling over their classmates, somebody's unmuting themselves and there's a lot of background noise and they won't mute themselves back up, all of that stuff. At which case I, I remove the option for them to unmute themselves and I ask them to raise their hand so I can call on them. With my little ones, a lot of times they don't understand like how background noise works. They don't understand that if mom is running the vacuum in the next room, we can all hear that and it can be a little bit distracting for the whole class. So what I do with my littles is I click unclick this box so it looks like this. So the participants are not allowed to unmute themselves. That means the only person who can turn their microphones on is you. I ask that my students put their hand up when they have an answer to a question. They can also send me a message if they'd rather do it that way. It's really, really helpful, um, especially with my little ones. My little ones just don't quite understand how to handle it yet. They don't quite understand how it can be distracting for background noise to be occurring. So it's just easier for me. It saves us all a lot of time and a lot of grief. And it also kind of puts us all in an even playing field. So nobody feels like they're unable to be called upon because somebody else is unmuting faster than they're able to do. 
One final thing that I um, use in my classroom, sometimes, not all of the time though, is this allow participants to rename themselves. Traditionally with my teenagers, this isn't an issue and I keep this guy checked because sometimes you'll get teenagers who have a different preferred name than what they're registered with throughout school, either a nickname um, or some other name that they traditionally go by. And I like for them to be able to change that name in, in the system within Zoom without having to ask me or tell me. That can make them feel a little bit uncomfortable, uh, especially depending on the circumstances regarding that name. However, sometimes this becomes an issue, especially in my 8 to 12 group. They love switching their names up. I have an EDM class, for example, and sometimes if I do not uncheck this box, I'll look up and I will have five or six DJ Marshmallows in class. And it's really hard to call in your students when five or six of them are all named DJ Marshmallow or whatever it is. So when we start to get a little too excited about the uh, rename themselves feature, or maybe some, I know sometimes teachers have issues with students uh, maybe using a funny word or an inappropriate word for their name, hoping that the teacher's gonna call on them with that name. Um, what I do then is I unclick this button. If you unclick it, it removes the check participants can no longer rename themselves. You can still rename them, however. So if you've had a student who's changed their name, you can unclick that button, you can go over to where their name would be here in participants, right here, and then you would just click rename. And when you click rename, you're able to type whatever you need to do, whatever you need to into that chat box. That can be a pretty handy skill. Um, I think that that's probably all. These mute all and unmute all buttons can be pretty helpful as well, especially if at the beginning of class you've got a lot of students who've unmuted themselves and you want to kind of draw their attention back to you. You can just hit mute all. All of them will become muted. The same with unmute all if you maybe have a class where you need to be listening for pronunciation, for example, or just a more conversational class where it's a lot easier to kind of handle uh, multiple students talking all at one time. I think that's about it for, for uh, this video though, but thank you for watching it. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned some new stuff and um, I wish you all the best on OutSchool. Bye for now.